Bokit Tov, Chavri Ma, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, June 19th, 2017. Tensions on the ground, escalation of violence inside of Syria, certainly starting to uh, grow daily there, hour by hour. Now the Iranians have lobbed over into Syria, targeting the proxies on the ground, ISIS proxies there that are, of course, the proxies of Saudi Arabia, claiming it was retaliation for the attacks in Tehran. But it's interesting, they're not targeting Saudi Arabia directly, but targeting the ISIS militants inside of Syria near Azor. According to the uh, Yahoo report right here, we actually saw this right after we reported the downing of the uh, Sukhoi 22, the Syrian-owned Sukhoi 22, over the skies of Raqqa this morning at about uh, 2 a.m. this morning. We were reporting that. Now says Tehran's Iran's Revolutionary Guard said Monday missiles it fired into Syria had successfully hit Islamic State group targets in retaliation for Tehran's attacks claimed by the jihadists early this month. Based on the credible information, the missile operations against Daesh has been successful, the Revolutionary Guard spokesman General Ramazan Sharif said on the Elite's Forces Sifa News website using an Arabic acronym for IS, for ISIS. Very troubling the advancement of these, uh, this, this, this conflict that is happening inside of Syria. We've reported here to you on Israeli News Live now for weeks that it appears that the U.S. coalition is intentionally trying to engage the Iranian-backed uh, militants fighting in the country for Bashar al-Assad, even trying to draw the Syrian forces into the conflict as well, hoping that they will retaliate against U.S. forces that would give a justification for the U.S. to be able to take down both the country of Iran and that of the Syrian military. Well, those actions are starting to play out. Now, we reported this the other day, showing a vindication of our own story there by Yahoo News that st uh, stressed as well two people in the uh, Trump administration were pushing for an offensive to draw in Syrian and Iranian proxies there in order to get the U.S. to give them a justification to take down both these, uh, these people, especially that of Iran, to give a, a, a go-ahead. Now that Iran has reached into the country of Syria from its own territory, Territory, that is now starting to give the U.S. exactly what they wanted, a reason to go after Iran. Now, at this point, they're going to say they targeted ISIS, so the U.S. can't really do much about it. Unlike the situation that just happened, where the U.S. has claimed that Syri Syrian uh, Air Force has targeted the Free Syrian Army on the ground and the Turkish fighters and have justified their actions by using an F-18 Hornet to bring down the Sukhoi-22. This is all changing rapidly though, friends. Russia today, June 19th, Russian military halts Syrian sky incident prevention interactions with the US as of June 19th, according to Moscow. Just breaking coming out right now. What does that mean? Well, it's a new direction for Russia. Russia has used this type of strong language before, which basically enacts the uh, S-300, S-400 anti-air defense system it also gives Russian pilots the go-ahead to engage with uh, U.S. coalition forces over the skies of Syria. It doesn't mean that they will actually do it, but it gives that go-ahead. Also in the article here, it says U.S.-led coalition downing of Syrian plane an act of aggression and support for terrorists, according to Moscow. That was according to Sergei Ryobokov. Who stated uh, in, that what is what is it then if it is not an act of an aggression, an act? directly in breach of international law, Rayo Bokov told journalists in Moscow. If you want it, it's actually help for the terrorists the U.S. is fighting, declaring that they are conducting a uh, counterterrorism policy, the official added. Uh, he also went on to say should should be uh, uh, that that we that he believed the strike should be the first of all regarded as a continuation of U.S. agenda of neglecting the norms of international law, regardless of who has power in Washington. People there are used to the fact that there are circumstances allowing them to arrogantly look down and in some situations to openly ignore the basics of international relations. A Syrian Sukhoi-22 warplane was shot down by a US F-A-18 Super Hornet on Sunday while it was on a mission in the countryside around Raqqa. Now there are conflicting reports as to who is really responsible. And 
I found a very interesting article regarding that, and this was from, uh, from southfront.org. It says, Syrian SU-22 didn't target Syrian Defense Forces, the SDF fighters, and Western Raqqa. Now, the U.S. is claiming they did. But this article here, very short and to the point, states this. Even such a hardcore anti-government media outlet as the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, SOHR, does not support the twisted logic that the U.S.-led coalition uses to justify its aggression against the Syrian government. So the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights is definitely not pro-Syrian at all, but this is what they stated. The fate of the pilot of the regime's warplane is still unknown. Where its warplane was dropped in the southern countryside of Al-Raqqa, the warplane was shot down over Al-Rasifa area of which the regime forces have reached to its frontiers today. And sources suggested to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights that the warplanes of the International Coalition targeted it during its flight in close proximity to its airspace of the International Coalition's warplanes, which caused its debris to fall over Risafa City and amid an unknown fate of its pilot. The source confirmed that the warplane did not target the Syrian Democratic Forces in their controlled areas located at the contact line with regime forces controlled areas in the western countryside of Al Tabaka to the road of Al Raqqa, Risafa. Now, Keeping that in mind, Al Tabaka is also a question that we found in the Russian article that speaks about the, the, the deaths of three American soldiers. So if the Syrian army is actually trying to back up their own forces who are also fighting uh, near Raqqa and who have advanced this far, and maybe, perhaps, I can't say that U.S. forces were killed by them. According to this article here, they're saying ISIS actually killed the U.S. forces that were on the ground there. Three servicemen, three U.S. servicemen were killed. Seven were wounded, according to this Russian article right here. And let me just kind of remind you of some of the wording for this article here. So Syrian results for the day of June 18th at 6 a.m., IG, or ISIS, lost 14 settlements near at Tabaka. The radicals killed three U.S. soldiers. There you go. At Tabaka. Now that is also, just so I want you to really follow this closely, this is the exact location where the plane goes down at. The Syrian Democratic Forces and their controlled areas located at the contact line with the regime forces controlled areas in the western countryside of Al Tabaka to the road of Al Raqqa, Rasafa. So he's targeting ISIS in this area, and it just so happens to be that this Russian article here is stating to us that, in the headlines itself, that at Tabaka, the radicals killed three U.S. soldiers. Well, is it that the United States is blaming the Syrian government for it? They're not even telling you in mainstream media that three U.S. soldiers were killed in this very location. We're talking about special forces on the ground there, and if they're there, who are they embedded with? I don't think the Turkish military there is right there as the Syrian army and ISIS are right there on the ground. Why then do we have U.S. special forces on the ground there? I'm just looking at this, friends. I can't say for certainty 100%. So we have to say this is alleged at this point here, but we are looking at the death of three U.S. soldiers. Seven of them were wounded. Al Tabaka is the place here on the Russian language. Three U.S. servicemen were killed in this particular area. This is also where the Russian Sukhoi uh, 22 that was actually flown by the Syrian military was shot down. It may be that the U.S. is retaliating for the deaths of their three American servicemen that are fighting in the region, but we're just not being told the truth of it. And also, Iran. Iran is lobbing in missiles from their own country targeting ISIS militants near Deir Azor. Because remember, Raqqa, they left open a corridor for the ISIS militants to escape to go to Deir Azor. The United States, even if they are not technically backing ISIS, they are wanting ISIS to help overthrow Bashar al-Assad and to weaken Assad's forces. 
I shared with you the other day Yahoo News vindicating our own theory that the United States government and their coalition there are trying to draw the Iranians into conflict as well as even the Syria, Syrian army into conflict, direct confrontation. That would give them the justification to take down Damascus and openly start a war with Iran and with Iran lobbing their missiles in from their mainland, as they said, in retaliation for the attacks in Tehran. And it, but they're, they're not targeting Saudi Arabia, but they are targeting Saudi Arabia's terrorist back group ISIS that are in the country there. So it is a quagmire of a mess that is going on there. And it's not the only thing. Of course, this here, the picture here uh, by Reuters is showing you in Raqqa here where the plane actually went down at. You can see the smoke rising right there. But then I come across this Russian article here on MIANews.ru. Very interesting article. I want to share with you what they say in this article too in the English language. Let me just drop down here for you. Uh, they say here, our plane, whoop, our plane was shot down today at lunch near the city of Raqqa when he was carrying out a mission against IG or ISIS, the official statement for the defense ministry said. At the same time, the headquarters of the coalition reported that the reason for the attack of the Syrian aircraft near the city of uh, Taba was allegedly the attack of the Syrian vessel of the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces. The SDF, English Syrian Democratic Forces, which includes the detachments of the Kurdish militia and the armed forces called the West moderate opposition at 1843 local time, the Su-23 Syrian regime aircraft dropped bombs near the SDF positions in accordance with the rules of self-defense. He was immediately shot down by an American F-18 Super Hornet fighter jet. All right, now, but here's where, like I say though, even if Syria was targeting the Syrian defense forces, not the Syrian defense, but the, but the Free Syrian Army that the U.S. has been backing these rebels, do they not have a right to defend their country against the, the civil war that is ensuing? You know, I can understand the U.S. backing the, I mean, I don't agree with it. Let me put it this way. I don't agree that it's not right for the U.S. to sit there and just topple a, a, a democratic country just because they want to. You know, I love my country, but I don't support the actions uh, of crime against humanity just because we don't agree with someone. We go in there and overthrow the country. What is, what is becoming of our ideology that we just go around the world and topple every nation just because we don't agree with it? Well, it starts off with Iraq saying that Iraq was the bad guy because of 9-11 when the Saudis were the ones that helped orchestrate 9-11. Why didn't we attack Saudi Arabia then? Why go pick a country that has nothing to do with it and did not have weapons of mass destruction, as was alleged? You know, sure, I didn't agree with Saddam Hussein, didn't agree with any of his ideology. And yes, he was over there massacring the Kurds in his country. Agree? You know, there is a reason to deal with those issues there. But then we go into Syria, the one country that is actually tolerant towards Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and we decide just to overthrow this country as well. Makes no sense, friends. None. And then we get all these conflicting reports that are coming out here. And Russia is saying that they did not attack the Free Syrian Army, or, you know, this, that the U.S. is backing. But to me, if they're going after Assad, they have a right to attack them as well. So what? But they were saying they were attacking ISIS. Then we have the confirmation from the very group, Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, that is anti-Assad. And they even claim that it, that Syria did not target the Free Syrian Army, but rather ISIS militants. But maybe this is why the three Americans were killed, and this may be exactly why the U.S. targeted the plane in the first place. I think that this is what's not being told to the American public. America targeted the Syrian Sukhoi-22 because they lost soldiers in the fight. They're not going to tell the American public because if they see that the, Amer that the Americans were killed right there where ISIS militants were at, then it's not going to go down very well at all. Also, in one other article here on the dailystar.co.uk, uh, they're speaking about this as well. They're also talking about Sergei uh, Ryobokov, Deputy Foreign Minister of Russia, called the incident on Sunday a dangerous escalation. He told the Kremlin own, uh, own task news agency it was an act of aggression and showed U.S. support for terrorists. And he warned that the new sanctions on Russia agreed by the Senate in Washington, D.C. last week would make Moscow retaliate. This comment follows the U.S. shooting down of the Syrian government jet yesterday near Raqqa. It is not going good.
I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Friends, don't forget as well, two things. We do need your support in keeping our broadcast alive. Please consider giving at IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there online. Uh, as well, our address appears at the end of the broadcast here. And also, we will be in the United States. We have very limited seating at the conference there that I'll be speaking at. My wife will be speaking as well on transhumanism and vaccines. Uh, Zen Garcia will be speaking. Stephen Pigeon will be speaking. Uh, I'll be speaking on Sunday. It's $25 for both days. The only reason we even charge tickets this time is because uh, the Noon Institute is covering the cost of bringing the people to the meeting. And uh, that is a very expensive endeavor, as well as the facility that we rented there, the Holiday Inn, uh, that seats 150 people in Duluth, Georgia. Uh, you can go to the website. It'll be posted below here, globalversusflatearth.com. That's because there will be a debate between uh, Zen Garcia and Stephen Pigeon on this particular topic. And... Uh, you know, I've got my own opinion on this, uh, I, I, but the thing is, is we're moderating the event, so we like to stay neutral in that case there. But there's so much uh, interest in this subject that we felt like it'd be a good time to bring that out while we're speaking as well, but to give you two men uh, that, are, that are friends as well that could debate this subject in a friendly discourse. Uh, anyway, we hope that you're able to make it there in Duluth, Georgia. Don't wait in getting your tickets. Believe me, they won't be there if you do. Uh, we do expect the event to sell out in a very short period of time. So visit our website. Uh, again, that is uh, be posted directly in the link. I'll actually put the link at the very top of the description in the description box below here on YouTube so you can find it easily enough. Uh, but go there and click on that. You can go in there. You'll find a place where you can buy tickets for the event there. And we hope to see you in Duluth, Georgia on August the 5th and 6th. Uh, we're just only about a month away, friends, a little over a month, and that's it. I'm Stephen Badoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.